Well, hello everyone. This is Basil the Orthobiker. Today I'm going to talk about Eikema 2022, some my thoughts and some of the bikes they've announced, as well as my hopes for the future that some of those bikes may bring. So Eikema 2022 ended a few weeks ago and a lot of new really interesting bikes were announced and I'd like to talk about a few of them. Now for those of you who don't know, Eikema is the global motorcycle fair slash trade show held in Milan every year and it is one of the most visited events in the world. Anybody who's anybody or does anything in the motorcycle industry goes to this event. It's usually what we look forward to when, uh, for manufacturers to announce new motorcycles, new concepts, new technologies, and so forth. And there are uh, a few announcements that were made at ICMA this year that I'm kind of really excited about, as I said. And there's at least one of them that gets me really hopeful for what the future of those companies that made those announcements may bring. Now, the first one I want to talk about is Honda. They announced the Trans Alp at uh, Eikema this year. Now, some of us already, well, when I say us, I mean others on the internet, had already pretty much predicted that this bike was going to be announced based on Honda film crews filming something in the Alps, as well as uh, trademark applications and other bits and pieces of data that have been released over the last month, few months. And this is a motorcycle I'm truly excited for. Now, as most of you may know, I've been looking at adventure bikes as a potential second bike when I get to that point. And I'm not. I'm probably a few years out. But in one of the bikes I've been looking at was a CB500X. I love that bike. I sat on one and it's very comfortable. I've been intrigued at the uh, Africa Twin, but let's be honest, I'm five foot seven, I have a 29-ish inseam. I can't even get that motorcycle off the kickstand. Pan American, I can't even get it off the kickstand. Panigale, same thing. So I don't really do tall bikes very well. So I'm genuinely excited for the announcement of the Trans Out because relative to the Honda lineup, this is kind of their middleweight adventure bike. The CB500X being the uh, intro, the Africa Twin being the flagship adventure bike. The Trans Out kind of fills the gap between 500cc and 1100cc in my opinion. Now, if I remember correctly, and I'll put it on screen if I'm wrong, I think the Trans Out is a 750cc engine. I don't, I'm not a specs guy, I don't memorize stats and whatnot of uh, motorcycles, but everything I've seen about it, it's, it pretty much uses the same engine as the new Honda Hornet announced earlier this year. Maybe retuned a little bit differently for, you know, the adventure segment, which is what it's made for. But that motorcycle, I, I'm truly excited for. Now, as to whether or when it will be available in the United States, I have no idea. Uh, no one even knows what the price of it is yet, so availability and pricing will play a pretty large factor in that motorcycle in the future, uh, just whenever those details are released. Now, another motorcycle I'm genuinely uh, interested in is the one announced by Royal Enfield, and probably as much for the motorcycle as it does for future prospects down the road. Now, I love Royal Enfield. They're maybe a year or two older than Harley-Davidson. They've been making parallel twin engines for about as long as Harley's been making V-twins, if not longer. The only thing that kept me from seriously considering a Royal Enfield motorcycle back when I was looking is the fact that they're all just, they're, they're all smaller engine displacements, like 350cc. Uh, now, they do have the uh, Interceptor 650, but I wasn't really a fan of that style of motorcycle. Not that it's a bad motorcycle, I just wasn't into that style of motorcycle. So most of their motorcycles are the 350 or 400cc range. The Super Meteor is the bike they announced. 
Um, it uses the same engine as Interceptor, but the bike itself is completely redesigned from the ground up. It's a completely new motorcycle relative to the uh, Royal Enfield lineup. And the motorcycle itself is really nice. Uh, I think Royal Enfield has touted it as a long distance uh, tour. And some of the models they're putting out, like the uh, GT model and so forth, as well as the accessories they're making available for the motorcycles, kind of speaks to that aspect. And while I really like the uh, styling of the Super Meteor, and I might actually include that on my potential candidates for a second bike, if only for the aspect of long distance riding, what the Super Meteor really makes me hopeful for is a Himalayan 650 down the road. Now they're willing to spend the R&D time and money to design an entirely new motorcycle from the ground up around the Meteor. I can only hope that they're willing to do the same thing with the Himalayan. Because the Himalayan is a great bike, but with that 400cc engine, I just it's not something with the way I intend to ride it. It's just not something I really seriously considered, even though it's probably a fantastic motorcycle. But if the Himalayan came out with a 650cc engine, man, that, that would probably oust the CB500X on my list of candidates for a second motorcycle, like an adventure slash sport touring type motorcycle. So that, the announcement of the Super Meteor has given me great hopes for a Himalayan with a larger engine. And, you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Let's just have to be hopeful for the future. Now, a lot of you that know me personally, you know, have, I have long discussed the SV650. I am a fan of that motorcycle. And I almost got that as my first bike, but I talked before in previous videos about why I didn't get that bike. But doesn't mean I still don't want to get that bike. Uh, I also have been considering the V-Strom 650 in part because it's a more adventure-ish focused bike with the same engine as the SV650, but also it's because it's a bike that my friend Sean has ridden across the country twice, I think, and he is largely a uh, main influence and reason why I started riding. I pestered him with questions for months, and I eventually pulled the trigger and started riding, and here I am. Of course, here I am is two years later, but still, you get the point. So the, the reason why I talk about those two is because Suzuki has announced uh, one new motorcycle and one kind of revamped. So it's no secret that Suzuki uh, has been toying around with a new parallel twin engine. Sometime earlier this year, I want to say before Sturgis, or maybe even during Sturgis, not at Sturgis, but in that time frame. Uh, somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Pictures started to emerge of Suzuki with a new parallel twin engine on what appeared to be an SV650-like platform and certainly, uh, definitely, on the V-Strom platform. And I don't think anybody quite expected Suzuki to announce those this year because that was the first thing they had been seen. I don't think anybody, it was even on anyone's radar at the time. So if you go look on their website, they have listed the V-Strom 800DE, no price listed yet. They also listing the GSX 8S, I believe is the name, which is a completely new motorcycle uh, for Suzuki, and which is surprising in itself because Suzuki hasn't made a new motorcycle and I do not know how long. Suzuki's kind of slow on coming out with uh, new technologies, new bikes, and anything significantly different from what they've just done in the past. They just kind of eh, tweak the aesthetics, maybe like make little minor upgrades here and there, or maybe add a piece of technology or something like that. But largely, their bikes have been the same ever since I started looking at Suzuki Motorcycle. Nothing much has changed, just different generations, I and mean, that's about it. So the fact they've announced a whole new motorcycle built around this new parallel twin engine was quite surprising to everyone. 
A lot of people see that as a successor to the SV650, but the SV650 is still listed on their, way, on their website. Though most of us are thinking the SV650 will probably eventually go the way of the Dodo, not because it's a bad bike, but because of you know increasingly restrictive emission uh, re requirements and restrictions, which unfortunately B twins are uh, difficult to maintain in that department. That's why Harley has kind of gone away from their air-cooled engine and their newer motorcycles and gone to liquid-cooled and the newer engines because their old ways of managing or you know working around the mission requirements just don't work anymore and I imagine Suzuki with their V-twin is probably running into much the same issue so instead of ruining a perfectly good engine they just designed a new one and that being said, I respect them for that. Instead of neutering and ruining the SV650, they're probably going to sell that for as long as they can, as long as it makes you know, financial sense and feasible to do so alongside this new bike. And when they phase out the SV650, I imagine the GSX-8S will be the spiritual successor to that motorcycle. Oh gosh, dang it. <laughs> it's so pretty this time of year. Now, I'll be honest, there was one bike I was hoping would be announced this year, but usually we get trickles of information before bikes are announced and there wasn't any. A lot of people are long waiting for Kawasaki to put a 400cc engine into the uh, Versus X bike. Now the Versus X300 is a great motorcycle, but we want the 400cc engine in it. Not this year, maybe next year, maybe never, we'll never know. Um, also surprisingly missing was were any announcements that I could see from Harley-Davidson. Now there's been a lot of speculation that Harley-Davidson has been uh, working on a kind of a middleweight-ish class uh, Pan America. And there are actually part numbers on their website and other little tidbits of information that suggest that such a bike is actually in the works already made. Which one is the case, I couldn't tell you. I've heard several people make such a prediction of an announcement from Harley-Davidson regarding that, but I didn't see Harley announce anything, so I guess we'll have to see what they do on their own down the road. Horsies! Oh, finally getting out of my way. Turn! Yay! Anyways, so yeah, those are the main announcements that I was excited about. Uh, Honda, Royal Enfield, and Suzuki. I did see that Kawasaki uh, made some announcements for some new e-bikes and even a hydrogen bike. I was like, that's a fallout accident waiting to happen. I even saw uh, some pictures and videos of an updated uh, Ducati Scrambler, but I'm not willing to pay the uh, Desmo valve Ducati tax as far as maintenance costs are concerned. If I can't work on it, I don't want it. <laughs> Ducati are great, but no thank you. So what announcements did you find that you're seeing at ICMA? I mean, I'm sure I didn't see all of them. I just, you know, read what reports I could, watch what videos I could. So I'd like to hear about what you thought about the announcements at ICMA. Which one was your favorite bike and why? Uh, what are you hopeful for for the future? Are there any uh, announcements you were disappointed in or lack of announcements? Let's get a conversation going. I'm curious what you think. But as always, if you like what you hear, like what you see, want to share my rides and adventures, and care to watch my reviews when I make them from time to time, 
Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and hit the bell icon in the lower right-hand corner of this video. That way you'll get alerted any time a new video gets released. But as always, keep the two wheels on the ground, shiny side up, ride safe, and God bless. Peace out. Why is there a cow standing on the side of the road? Hello, hamburger. Future steak. Ooh. <laughs>